Hey, hi, thanks for joining me in this devlog. I'm making a third person shooter game where you can transform and climb stuff. It's been a while since the last video, so let's get straight into it. I began by making a new enemy model. It's a big robot with a long neck that it can use to find and attack the player. After the usual modeling and texturing process, I rigged the new enemy and set up IK for its legs and neck. I then also added procedural animations for the leg movement. Since this enemy isn't quite as gigantic as the first enemy, it needs to actually avoid obstacles and move along the terrain. I decided to go with the built-in FMI system because I've used it many times before and it's really straightforward to set up. As you can see here the blue areas are walkable and anything that is not blue is unreachable. With the basic navigation done, I moved on to programming the different enemy behaviors. In an attempt to act professional, I figured it would be a good idea to draw a state diagram and I used that to build a state machine. I quickly realized just how boring state machines are and programming all the states kinda felt like school. So I took a break and decided to set up controller input first. I've been putting off the controller input for some time because I wasn't sure how to fit all the different actions on a controller. This time I just went through all the scripts and made a clear list of every action in the game. With the list of actions ready, I downloaded a plugin called Rewired and set up all of the input actions. I then assigned every action to a keyboard key and a controller button. Now it works like a charm and the only thing left to do is to set up key rebinding. But first I worked on a new area. I really wanted this new area to feel alien, so I put blue grass and glowing creatures and a bunch of distant planets. I kept the orange trees because they work well with the blue scenery. I did make a couple more tree variations, just to make things look a bit more natural. To make a new tree, first I take one vertex and extrude it in a long line. I then apply a skin modifier to give the tree some thickness. And finally I put a bunch of spheres that are made up of quads on the tree branches. I've also made a shader in Unity that animates the tree leaves and randomizes their color based on the tree position. On the topic of shaders, this month I redid the distant planet so instead of simple quads I've put actual spheres with a custom shader. The shader basically takes the sunlight direction and renders only a subtle outline of the planet using a Fresnel effect combined with some noise and a normal map. Anyway, to top off the new area I wanted to try and add some water as well. Now, I don't like adding new animations to the player character and swimming wouldn't really work with the shooting, so the new area will only have really shallow water. I did use a simple trigger to make the water slow players down and I've also added some particle effects to bring the water to life. At this point I felt ready to work on the enemy behavior again. The enemy has 6 main states. First, it searches for the player. When the enemy gets shot in its eye, it transitions to the eye hit state. It then follows the player and occasionally shoots homing missiles. If players get too close, the enemy will slam its head into the ground to attack. During the attack, enemies can also look up into the sky and call in drones for backup. Finally, when players decide to climb on the enemy, it transitions to the shake next state to try and get rid of the player. I kinda like the state machine approach, because it keeps things nice and readable, though I do feel like it takes twice as long to implement. Now if you've paid very close attention, you might have noticed one crucial thing is missing. There's plenty of ways for the robot to obliterate the player, but the robot itself is pretty much invincible at this point. Instead of the regular old health bar, I really wanted to force players to climb the robot. I gave it some thought and came up with this mechanic where you first destroy a glass panel on the back of the robot, and then you pull a lever to remove the batteries to shut the robot down. For the glass panel, I fractured it in Blender and then I load the broken pieces in when the glass breaks. I had already built a lever mechanic before, so that was just a matter of copy and pasting. For some reason the batteries part took me multiple days to figure out. Basically players grab a battery and then pull it up until it reaches the top of the socket. The battery should then detach and when all the batteries are gone, the robot shuts down. To get the battery movement to work, first I check if the player is currently grabbing the battery. I then take the difference between the current camera up direction and the camera up direction when the player first grabbed the battery. Using this value, I move the battery up on its local up axis until it reaches some threshold. When it reaches this threshold, the battery gets unparented and I show a bunch of effects to make it more impactful. 
With that out of the way, I wanted to try and get some story elements into the new area. In the current story, these planets are all being harvested by cyborgs for their resources. Eventually, I want to put some sci-fi devices like giant metal balloons and futuristic towers. For now though, it's just a row of cylinders and a big cube, so let's quickly move on. Something I noticed when building the new area is how running around can feel kinda boring and tedious. One game that I've talked about before that I think solves this issue super well is the Pathless. In that game, it basically allows you to shoot thingies in the sky to boost your movement, which feels incredibly fun. Personally, I much prefer this over something like the Breath of the Wild stamina system, because it will never force players to stop running. Instead, you just need to focus on keeping your stamina bar filled. Rather than directly copying the system from the Pathless, I decided to spawn crystals that players can shoot to regain stamina. This stamina Stamina then allows players to run faster. After shooting, the crystals automatically reappear so players can never run out of ways to gain stamina. I also used a plugin called DoTween to show a cool highlight around the crystals to make them easier to notice. I've actually wanted to use the DoTween plugin for a while after seeing it on the Mix and Jump channel, but never really got around to it. After making traveling more fun, I implemented a bit of a weird ammo system. I find collecting ammo in shooters really satisfying, but when it turns out the ammo doesn't fit my weapons, it feels a bit annoying. To get around this, I've added a global ammo counter and based on the weapon type it'll subtract a certain amount of ammo. So for example, you can pick up 5 ammo and then choose to either shoot 5 bullets or 1 rocket. I'm not really sure how intuitive this is though, so I appreciate any thoughts. Finally, for this devlog, I participated in the GMTK game jam. I basically sat behind my laptop for a weekend straight to make a game in 48 hours. The team was joined together and I made a game where you use your enemies to build stairs and bridges. It didn't quite win, but I'm quite happy with my submission nonetheless. I will put a link to my game below if anyone's interested. I hope this was interesting, thanks for watching.